Taurus, welcome to your mid-August 2018 tarot update. It's Raina here, so I'm using the Wild Unknown Tarot for this particular spread. It's a pretty simple, straightforward five-card spread that I'm going to be using. The heart of the matter is the Two of Swords. This can be some sort of choice that you feel is kind of keeping you in a state of indecision. Maybe you're at a crossroads of some sort and you don't know which way to go. I like how they have the sun. It looks like the sun. You know, it's funny. I was thinking of the solar eclipse. Um, you know, let's see. So for you, that was in the career sector, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was in the fourth house, actually. Um, so maybe some of you are have been wanting to move, and yet there is some kind of back and forth about that, and you're not quite sure what to do. It can always be other things, you know, having children. Maybe it's simply something to do with your career that um, you're not quite sure what to do going forward. If you should continue on the road you're on. So let me just keep going. The past position is the Eight of Pentacles, and this is a card of the, they call this the, um, like the Apprentice card, where it's like working really hard to perfect your craft, and so it can be somebody who has trained to do something, and, you know, so they can have certain qualifications, and whatnot. And what this could mean to me is that sometimes what happens is that you train to get a certain degree and after it's all over all of a sudden you don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and yet you might feel obligated to do whatever it is you train for because you might have put in so much money to do it or taken so much time and sacrifice and that's one of those things that's kind of uh, I don't know if it's you'd call it a slap in the face but it just goes to show that a lot of times what we think we want we don't necessarily want and it could have been that you were influenced by others in making that decision People might have said, like, let's say you did have a college degree, and they said, oh, you can't, what are you going to get hired? You have a degree in history, which you got because you love history, but you know what? You can't do anything with a history degree. you got to become a teacher, a history teacher, and then you can get a job, and then you went back and you got your teaching certificate. And while you were doing that, you felt a lot of resistance because you realized that you don't like teaching or you don't like the environment. Maybe you love teaching, but the way things are today, it makes it difficult. I'm using that as an example because that's what kind of happened to me. And um, I always wanted to be a teacher. I finally went and was, um, you know, trying to get a certificate. But I realized that it's not, there's a concept and there's a reality. And sometimes the reality does not connect with what is going on even what you're taught you know what you're taught can be completely la la land compared to reality of the situation you know there's a lot of uh, idealizing that goes on sometimes in textbooks and real life experience should never be 
uh, scoffed at because it really is the key. And once people start doing something, that's when they discover how they feel about it. It's a lot easier to fantasize about it. So um, it can be an interesting dilemma. And Taurus, you know, being an earth sign, your first impulse may be, I'm going to do the practical thing. But what about if you took as many actions as possible, Taurus, that were about feeling good and doing things that made you happy? Does that seem like pie in the sky? Does that seem impossible and selfish and even crazy to think that a person could live that way? Because I have a feeling that for some people it does. And I love to read comments under videos because I love to hear what other people, I love to um, find out what other people are thinking about, you know, and compare it to how I'm thinking about a certain topic. And sometimes they have videos about people complaining, you know, college graduates complaining that they can't find a job and they spend all this money, spend all this time, and they can't find a job. And especially if it's a field that's kind of obscure or, you know, like a liberal arts degree type of a thing, which is what I have, but, you know, things like that. And this one person said, I remember, or this is common, where they say, well, that was your fault. You should have seen what was the most popular types of, um, you know, majors that were going, you know, have the best job potential after graduation and gone into those fields and seen what was out there. Now, I'm sorry, but that's that way of living that might give you a nice income, but can it make you happy? Basically, what that person is saying is that the goal in life is to find the safest bet you can find and train for that. And the Eight of Pentacles, if you're training for something that you love, that's wonderful. But if you are in some kind of a field just because it's pragmatic, I don't know if you can sustain that for, for very long, you know what I mean? So it's it's worth thinking about. And what we have for the current position was we have the Nine of Cups, which is great. There may be something in your life right now that feels really great. Now this could be, this is a, an emotional card and stuff like that, but I have read it even describing some kind of material gain or prosperity. The Nine of Cups is a wish fulfillment card. Now, having said that, I don't want to talk about inheritances like you're wishing that, you know, someone would die so they could give you some money. But if you were thinking at some point, boy, I wish I had X amount of money because then I could take some time off because I really want to be, you know, I really want to just like have free time so I can develop my own business. I have these ideas or I want to write a novel or I want, you know, whatever it is. Or I want to start a YouTube channel, whatever people feel like. And I want to like travel in a stealth van around the country <laughs> and, and, and show off my travel log. And you get this money. Maybe it's an inheritance. Maybe it's just some kind of, um, I don't know, payout from, from something in the past. Whatever, whatever happens, if it's on, in the, on the material level, then you may have a dilemma of, do I just abandon all this training that I've had to do this new thing? Or do I kind of continue on that path? Because that's the other thing, too. This could be the Nine of Cups. Just uh, forget about receiving money. Even if it's just a sense of following your bliss. 
versus, you know, the pragmatic approach, which is with the Eight of Pentacles, you know, having trained for something, investing time in it, and wanting to get your money's worth, that kind of thing. One thing I want to say, too, about the Nine of Cups, obviously this could even be like a romantic situation, and maybe you you might have this job offer or where you would be separated from someone and you don't want to be separated from them or it's possible that you're looking at um, an earth sign individual versus a water sign individual earth taurus like you virgo capricorn water cancer scorpio or pisces and again, it could be the same theme, pragmatic versus emotional. That's what I, I want to leave you with um, most of all, is that the Nine of Cups is a feeling card, even though it may talk about different things. It's all about feeling very optimistic and feeling like your dreams have come true, basically. But life is multi-layered so sometimes we may be ecstatic about one area of our life and we are challenged in another area or sometimes we have these wonderful opportunities but we have to choose between both of them and it's not that easy sometimes um, what's coming in is represented or this sometimes is the advice actually that's yeah I, I don't want to say it's coming in because actually um, the outcome card is more like that the advice is the, the Four of Cups, and so because this can be a card of disinterest and disappointment, look to areas of your life where you feel disappointed by or, or, or disinterested. If you have trained for something, invested money and time in something, and you're afraid that you, you just don't like it. What is the point in continuing investing more time in it? So really, your choice has been made. But sometimes we don't trust when we're happy. If the Nine of Cups is about following your bliss, and maybe you have this opportunity that's not as solid as what the Eight of Pentacles represents, and yet you still feel like you're obligated to do it, really think about that. You may not be... Um, honoring yourself, what you really need. The cups relates to our emotions and our emotions relate to our soul. And when the four of cups, um, look at this card, it's so creepy. Because it, the feelings are creepy. The feelings are blah. It's like, you know, this isn't a hamster, but I, I think of a hamster on a wheel that just goes through the motions, a zombie. Nobody wants to be that, but so many people find themselves in that trap. And it's all because they're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of not having that sort of um, guarantee that everything is going to be all right while they're trying to pursue their dreams. There may be this feeling of um, the unknown being scary, but it can be energizing because... If you don't know what's ahead of you, then there are no limits to what can happen. You know, I was thinking about this. It, it, it dawned on me that when you work for yourself, yeah, you may have times where you don't understand, okay, why is there no continuity happening right now? Why did everything grind to a halt? And now I'm not, you know, now I have no business. And then all of a sudden, why is it like so crazy now? Why is it so good? Like kind of like that, just a roller coaster ride sometimes. And, and being a little bit leery of that, I can totally understand that. But there can be incredible heights and there can be, so it's like you might be saying, yeah, but I don't have a steady paycheck, but by the same token, that means that you might get more next week. You're not limited to whatever somebody is 
willing to pay you for the next year and you have to be set at that level. There's more flu fluidity and so that uh, affords you that vibration, if you will, that of, of the potential of life because it's changeable. And so that kind of stimulates you into thinking, yes, we can always uh, improve and have more. We don't have to just stay in the status quo. So that's really good, you know. And so paying attention to your feelings is very important when you're deciding, making a decision, and you're at a crossroads. The outcome is the Son of Wands, which corresponds to Knight of Wands. You see that... I think that's supposed to be like a double meaning. It looks like a, to me it looks like a dandelion, but it's probably also, see, because there's a stalk there. But I'm sure that it's kind of like also supposed to be kind of like a sun, which kind of, a, a, as a flower, a dandelion is kind of like a miniature sun. And the sun represents the wand's energy, you know, Leo is ruled by the sun. It's a fire sign. All the fire signs are um, are like this. And what this can mean with the Knight of Wands is that sense of adventure. So it sounds to me like you're going to choose the adventure, Taurus. And that you want to... I mean, you like, you don't care about the predictability so much right now. And why this would be, I was thinking, why would this be for, for Taurus? This is unlike Taurus. But I just realized you have Uranus in your sign. And uh, it is retrograding right now. And it's going to eventually go back into Aries. Um, but still, that may give you a little bit more desire for the unknown for things, you know, for surprises, be open to that a little bit more experimental, perhaps. And that's wonderful. Okay, well, that's what I have for you, Taurus. If you'd like a private reading, the link to my website is below. Take care. Have a, rest, a great rest of August. Bye.